Lecture number two for the digestive system, we're going to talk about what's going on digestively in and around your oral cavity. <clears throat> All right, so in your mouth, this is where you actually are going to start your digestive processes. And obviously, ingestion of food takes place in the mouth. Hopefully, that's where you're ingesting your food. And then we mentioned mechanical breakdown is one of the processes of digestion. And of course, chewing, you know, you're taking in chunks of food and breaking that down into smaller pieces is going to obviously help you out with digestion. Sorry about that, my phone here in the office was ringing a little bit. All right, then propulsion. Uh, the mouth is going to be involved with swallowing the muscular contractions that are associated with that. Swallowing is actually called deglutition. That's the official name for it. <clears throat> Now, believe it or not, you do actually start digesting food in your mouth as well. And when we're talking about digestion, I mean, there are enzymes that are helping you break down the organic molecules in the uh, foods that you're consuming. <clears throat> so uh, the enzymes that are involved that are um, start these digestive processes in the mouth include salivary amylase. Amylase is an enzyme that digests starch. And starch is a polysaccharide, okay? When you're eating things that contain starch, those are chains of glucoses that are linked together. So amylase enzymes break the bonds between glucose molecules. Uh, lingual lipase, lingual refers to the tongue. So this is uh, the source of the lipase. And lipases are going to break down lipids. <clears throat> So that's starting the processes of helping you break down those lipids into absorbable molecules. Now, you don't absorb nutrients in the mouth. There are a few drugs, though, that you can take that can be absorbed through the, the lining of the mouth. But in terms of foods that we're eating, they're not absorbed in that location. That's not going to be a mouth function. So a little bit about these salivary glands. And we'll be taking a look at those anatomically on the anatomy side. <clears throat> and as you're hearing over on the anatomy side, you do have parotid. Those are the big salivary glands uh, on either side in, in your cheek area. And then you have submandibular salivary glands. Those are, as the name suggests, beneath the mandible. And sublingual, as that name suggests, sub means below. Those are below the tongue. Lingual always refers to the tongue like language. And there are some other minor small ones as well, but those are your main salivary glands. So they produce saliva. They are exocrine glands and not <coughs> endocrine glands. So if you guys remember the difference between endocrine and exocrine glands, exocrine glands have a duct that carries a secretion uh, to a surface where it's going to release it. So, of course, our surface here is going to be the inside of the mouth. So, what are the functions of saliva? It helps cleanse your mouth. Um, it helps dissolve the food, the chemicals in your food that you're consuming and chewing so that you can taste them with your taste buds. helps moisten your food. That makes sense. Uh, so, you guys, if you've ever swallowed, I'm sure we've all swallowed dry food before without sufficiently moistening it, moistening it in the mouth, and that's not too much fun. It also helps to compact it into a bolus. A bolus is a wad of food that you have chewed up that you're going to swallow down through your esophagus. And as I mentioned, the saliva contains salivary amylase, and amylase enzymes start the process of breaking apart starches, chains of glucose sugars, into absorbable glucose molecules. <clears throat> All right, what do you have in your saliva? What are the ingredients? Obviously, most of it's water, 97 to 99.5% uh, is water. It's a little bit acidic, so it's not at normal human body pH. It's a little bit on the acidic side. And uh, that's actually important for helping to control the numbers of microorganisms that we have in the mouth. Now, your mouth is a zoo of microorganisms. I don't care how much you brush your teeth. Your mouth is full of them. Um, <clears throat> they're supposed to be there. 
the acidic conditions of the saliva, though, help keep the populations under control. If you had uh, saliva at a neutral pH, you would really have a ton of microbes in your mouth. Lots of electrolytes in saliva, things like sodium, potassium, uh, chloride. This is phosphate, phosphate ions, good old bicarbonate that we were talking about in the, when we covered the respiratory system in there as well. <clears throat> also, you have the lingual lipase because the tongue is producing that enzyme that's going to help you start breaking down your lipids that you're consuming. Mucin is a type of glycoprotein. A glycoprotein is a sugar protein combination and what these do is they bind lots of water. Sugars, carbohydrates love water. They have, just like if you left sugar out on a kitchen counter on a humid day, it's going to get sticky because it's going to absorb water from the atmosphere. So mucin is a glycoprotein that's present in saliva and other substances, mucus type substances in the body. Uh, the name sounds like mucus, so that's not a, survive, uh, not a surprise. These bind water, and by doing that, they form a gel-like substance. So they help thicken uh, the saliva or mucus. If you think about the consistency of mucus as being a little jelly-like, it's because, uh, in large part, it's because of those mucin proteins, glycoproteins that are there. We do excrete some wastes in our saliva, urea and uric acid. We'll talk more about those when we go over the urinary system in Unit 5. Those are wastes that are generated from metabolism of proteins and nucleic acids. And finally, there are some things in saliva that do help combat microorganisms. Uh, lysozyme is an enzyme that attacks bacteria. Antibodies made by your uh, adaptive immune system. Uh, which are weapons that attach to very, very, very specific types of microorganisms or other things that are foreign to the body. You have some of those in your saliva as well, believe it or not. Defensins are proteins that kill some types of bacteria. And there's even a cyanide-based compound in your saliva, believe it or not, that helps uh, control the numbers of microorganisms in your mouth. And again, everybody's got tons of microbes in your mouth. I don't care how much you brush your teeth, but uh, those substances I was just mentioning help control the population so they don't get ridiculously out of control. All right, so teeth. So we'll be taking a look at teeth over on the uh, anatomy side for the unit. But again, um, if you haven't seen that already, you have four classes of teeth. You have incisors. Those are your four front teeth. So you have four on top, well, not just your four front teeth, and four on the bottom. <clears throat> those are the ones in the center, and you use those for cutting. Then you have your canines. So you have two of those on the top, two on the bottom. Those are your fang-like teeth. If you're a vampire, they're especially long. They help you tear, uh, tear or pierce foods that you're consuming. Then if you keep moving back from there, you uh, reach your premolars. So you have four of those on top, four on the bottom. Those are your thicker teeth. They have broader crowns. They help you with grinding and crushing your food. And then finally, your very back teeth are the molars. And you have six of those on top, six on the bottom, and those are the ones you use for really grinding up something tough like steak way, way, way back in the uh, back of your mouth. Now, uh, if you've had your wisdom teeth taken out, then you only have four molars on the top and four molars on the bottom. So if you add those up, you have 16 teeth on the top and 16 teeth on the bottom that are used to help us out with mechanical digestion. All right, the structure of teeth. All right, so the, the part of the tooth that you can actually see is called the crown. You've probably heard about that before. And that is the part that you see above the gingiva. Gingiva is the anatomical term for gum, like gingivitis. You've probably heard of gingivitis before. That's inflammation of the gums. The crown is what is covered by enamel, which is actually the hardest substance in the body. It's built from calcium salts and 
hydroxyapatite crystals. Remember hearing about that when you learned about the skeletal system in Biology 201. So the composition is similar to bone, but it's even harder than the osseous tissue matrix that you have in, in bone. Unfortunately, our enamel-producing cells die after your permanent teeth erupt through the gum. So that means if your enamel breaks down, wears down, or you digest the enamel by drinking lots of coffee, things like that, over time, it doesn't get replaced. The root is the part of the, uh, the tooth that's embedded down in the jawbone. All right, let's take a let's move over here and just take a look at, from your textbook, the diagram of a tooth so we can see these different features here. Uh, here's the crown. This is your gum line or your gingiva right in here. And if you guys remember, you might remember this when you learned about joints in Biology 201. The joint between a tooth and your maxillary bones on top or your mandible down on the bottom, uh, each of those joints is called a gomphosis, which is basically your tooth socket that you have there. All right, so the root of the tooth is down in here. As you can see, everything below the gum will be part of the root. You do have this little pink strip that you see right in there. That's called the periodontal ligament. So that is dense connective tissue that helps anchor the root of the tooth down in that gomphosis in the, in the tooth socket. And then inward from there, you have a little thin layer of tissue or a, a very sticky substance called cement, believe it or not, that helps hold the root of the tooth against the periodontal ligament. The blue areas you see on here are dentin. All right, so if you look closely, most of the tooth is composed of dentin. That's also a very hard bone-like substance, but it's beneath the enamel. It has more of a yellowish color, you know, so as you get older, uh, and your enamel wears out, your teeth look more yellow because you're really exposing the dentin and not so much that nice pearly white enamel anymore. Uh, the pulp cavity of the tooth is right here in the center, and you can see you do have nerves in there and yellow and blood vessels. The teeth are living tissues. The dentin is living tissue like bone, so it does have to be maintained, and there is metabolism going on there. So you've got to have a blood supply for it. And I think we all know we have nerves <laughs> within our teeth, if you've ever been to the dentist. Uh, there is a passageway. You know, where are those blood vessels and nerves coming from? Um, they have to extend upward through the center of the tooth from tissues that are um, up higher or down lower. And so the passageway for those blood vessels and nerves is called the root canal. We've all heard that term before. We've heard about people who are having procedures done on, on a root canal somewhere. If they have an infection of bacteria get down in that area and you have inflammation going on there, that's not too cool and usually a painful process that somebody has to go through. Okay, so um, I believe Tooth structure covered most of this. Your cement is actually calcified connective tissue. I don't think I mentioned that when we were looking at the diagram. That's a little thin strip that holds the tooth to the periodontal ligament and forms the joint with the bone. Your maxillary bones up on top or the mandible down on the bottom. Gingival sulcus, I don't really care that much about whether you remember what the gingival sulcus is. Uh, same thing with apical foramen there on the bottom of that slide. Um, that's just there kind of for your own information. That's the proximal end of the root, uh, way down at the bottom or the top if you're thinking about your top teeth. So at the opposite end from the tooth. That's where the blood vessels and the nerves and so forth enter into the tooth. You can see that there on the diagram. There's your apical foramen here where your blood vessels and nerves are going to enter into the root canal and extend upward 
towards the pulp cavity there in the center of the tooth. All right, so we're gonna start moving on down from there toward the stomach. Now that you've chewed up your food, you've created a bolus and we're gonna swallow it. So it's gonna have to pass through the esophagus and down into the stomach. So that's where we'll continue our story in the next video lecture.